The second part of the neurological exam is assessing the cranial nerves. We have 12 cranial nerves, so do the dogs. The first one is olfactory, sense of smell. You can do so with a cookie. You put a cookie in one hand and no cookie in the other hand. And Rosie should be able to figure out where the cookie is. Very good, Rosie. The next test you want to do is vision. Vision can be assessed in a number of ways. The more familiar way is with the transilluminator, where you will shine a very bright light, not a pen light, but a transilluminator in the eye under a dim light setting to go ahead and assess particular light response. If the PLR is normal on, either, on both sides, then you do not need to test indirect. You need to make sure direct is normal. If the direct PLR is not normal, then you need to assess indirect. The second thing to test vision is tracking. Tracking is done with cotton balls. They do not smell and they do not make noise. Simply go ahead and drop a cotton ball in the periphery of the eyes and the dog will track it. We know that Rosie has good vision. Do not let them eat it. Thank you, Rosie. The other thing you can do is menace. You're holding the animal and you want to go ahead and do a threatening gesture to the eye. Avoid the fullness of the hand open as you will move too much wing to the cornea and test we on a five, the ophthalmic branch, the cornea. So simply a closed fist and you should be able to get a nice menace, as in rosy. That will test your vision. When you want to test we on a three, four, and six together, you will go ahead and assess movement of the eyes. You can simply move the dog's head side to side and watch for proper follow-up of the eyeballs, up and down as well. If you have a cat or a small dog, you want to hold them like a baby and then move them side to side the whole body and follow. If you're in a turning chair, you can do that as well. Follow their eye movement. You also want to assess for what we call pathological nystagmus versus normal physiological nystagmus. The pathological nystagmus is what you're familiar with spontaneous nystagmus, where the eyes spontaneously move either vertically, rotatory, or horizontal motion to one side. This should be present in animals that have usually vestibular issues, vestibular problems. In Rosie, as I lift the eyes, I lift the eyelids off the eyes, I can see that there's no spontaneous movement. She does not have any vestibular problems. The next thing you want to test is cranial nerve 5 and 7 together. 5 and 7 can be tested with vibrous response. As I touch the lips, she blinks on both sides, or palpebral by touching the corner of the eyes. And the other thing you can do is assess the cornea of downing branch we mentioned earlier. You can simply open the eye, touch gently with the tip of your finger, or use a Q-tip that's been simply put in water and go ahead and gently touch the cornea. This Q-tip was on the floor, I will not use it. Simply use the tip of my finger and gently touch the cornea and her eyes will pull back as so. The next thing you want to go ahead and test for is cranial nerve 8 to the vestibular system and you want to also test 9 and 10, the gag response. The gag response is done best by opening up the mouth and sticking your finger down that throat. Most dogs cannot bite as they gag. However, if the animal is mean and muzzled, you can go ahead and assess a swallow response. I simply go ahead and massage Rosie's throat and she swallows again fairly easily. Cranial nerve 12 assesses the tongue. You can look at the symmetry of the can when they're panting away. The tongue should be in the middle. Both sides of the tongue should be evenly muscled. That finishes our cranial nerve exam.